Good morning. I'm Bill Zortman, and welcome to the June Report Card Show, show 4139 in our original It's Your Business series. So who's in the show today? Let's see. There's Tony Bachman, the keynoter from Coldwell Banker, Doug Topp, president of the Home Builders Association, Tara Allen, Real Estate Association, Butch Warrington, building permit chief, city of Sioux Falls. Guess who's back? Brent Adney. Home Ownership, South Dakota Housing Development Authority, along with Dave Kelly, Fairway Mortgage, and Jerry Berg from Intech. That's quite the list. You you got to lead the parade. Hey, Bill, it's uh, I'm humbled to be the one that's leading the parade, but you've got a really good lineup here. So when it comes to at least giving everybody some information about what's going on in the real estate market, what's going on with interest rates, uh, they're going to be able to get a real quick snapshot in a matter of an hour of what's happening. I will tell you that listening to people this morning – uh, by phone, in studio, wherever it is, well, what do we say? Where are we at? Where are we going? And to me, nobody knows. Yeah, we're just kind of in uncharted territory here with, you know, what's happening. You know, interest rates have gone up, you know, and that's kind of put some buyers on their heels. You know, I think that that's, uh, and even sellers, you know, in, in reference to this, you know, I've because Tara Allen, who's president of the Realtors Association, the Association of the Sioux Empire, being here, she also we were just talking about that. That's kind of the one thing that we're experiencing a little bit with not only new buyers but also people who are thinking about listing their homes. Yeah, we're hearing a lot of people in holding patterns. Just everyone, you know, some people just want to wait to see what are the Feds going to do, what are home prices going to do, and the fact is, is our inventory is so low, and so when interest rates drop, should they drop? It's just going to create a buying frenzy and. So I think right now is a great time to buy because you can always refinance later. And, you know, when when interest rates go down, you're going to have a lot more competition. Well, we're going to dissect, trisect, do anything that we can on the numbers this morning with the list of experts. It's nice to have these people willing to come on the show once a month. And, Tony, if uh, you had to outline past what we've already said, what would it be? Um, Well, I think, you know, some of the talking points that we we, we kind of touch on is people say, well, I'm going to wait for prices to, you know, uh, lower before I, you know, go out and buy, or I'm going to wait for interest rates to lower, uh, you know, to reduce. And I think the, we've got this perfect storm of, you know, we have a number of buyers who are on the sidelines and just to Terrace point where if they even get a, a whiff of interest rates dropping, they're all going to come to the table and they're all going to want to buy at the same time. So, uh, what happens is we already have an inventory level that's a little low. I mean, in reference to, you know, traditional standards, traditional uh, um, markets. And, you know, with that, I think that we're advising to our buyers who are serious and we're advising, take a serious look, move forward, because you can always, to Terrace point, refi that interest rate. But I know that it's hard when you're looking at the, the numbers and especially when they say, well, if I'd have done this two years ago, I get it. It's it's like one of those things that uh, you just have to come to terms with it. And I think many people are. I mean, they're getting to the point where they're getting more comfortable with the fact that, okay, this is what the interest rates are and this is where the market lives. Um, but I think when we're talking about key metrics uh, for May, because this is what the show is, I know we're in the middle of June, but, you know, talking about the key metrics for May, we'll just kind of run through this laundry list real quick. Uh, new listings were up 16% from the previous year. But when I compare it to 2018, because I'm kind of comparing – so we we kind of call the 2021 and 2022 the unicorn years. Unicorn years meaning you just don't run into something like that where they had an average of 18% increase in appreciations, where normal appreciations somewhere around 4 to 5%, which currently we're back in that market where our appreciation for home values is 5% um, is kind of where it's cal- calculated at right now. But when we talk about new listings, we're still down from 2018 – we're down to like 11%. So we're just trying to give perspective there. Pending sales are up 25%, which is awesome. That just means that we're seeing more and more people coming off the sidelines, actually acting and making something happen. But we're still down 20% from 2018 numbers. So, I mean, it, we've seen a little bit of a choke point on the number of trans- transactions due to the lower inventories. Um, closed sales are down 20% um, from last year. But I also know that it seems like it's just taking a little longer for people to come to the table. So that number will go up you know, by the time we see the next next report. And then um, median sales price, pretty much the same. I mean, they were just uh, – median sales price is only up about 1% from last year. But when we compare it to 2018, median sales price is up 32%. Again, that's just more about perspective of what's happened over the last few years. 
Uh, inventory of homes are down. Um, they're down about 4% uh, from last year. But here's the <laughs> true indicator. They're down 27% from 2018. So that's why when people say, well, I'm going to wait for prices to reduce, they're not going to reduce because it's yeah. supply and demand. The demand is there. The supply is not. And so this is why we're telling our buyers, I would just tell you, make a decision. Uh, let's make a let's make an educated decision that makes sense for you financially. Don't make you house rich and cash poor. But uh, obviously, you want to buy a home. You want to do something. Let's uh, let's take a look at what we need to do. I had Ron Nelson on commercial real estate, and we were talking about commercial real estate. Where is it going? Is it a time to buy? Is it a time not to buy? And a lot of the things that you've already talked about, you and Tara, in the first two and a half, three minutes, is what we covered in like eight or nine minutes as to the uh, the, the side where you're looking at homes, but you're look, looking as well at apartment buildings. You're looking at uh, anything that might be a business. Things are different. And it's just uh, when we hear from Dave Kelly – when, when we hear from uh, Brent Adney about the prices, about the interest rates, that can make a difference. But we can't just go on what one or two people say. We have to see the trend. Yeah. Well, and I think the trend being is when you say, well, you started the segment by saying you were having this consensus of conversation and nobody was really kind of had a real idea of where this was going. You're right to a certain extent where I don't have like a definitive like this is exactly what's going to happen. But I also know that I don't see anything major happening in reference to a a change. I think we're just going to see more of the same of what we've seen over the last six months, you know, moving forward. What do you think, Tara? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it just comes down to um, the people who are truly motivated will still make a move. And no matter what, you know, I was just reading one of the things that people regret in life is not buying enough real estate and how it is your best investment. And, you know, it, it just sit down and say, am I going to move in two or three years? If not, it's still it's it's a great time, you know. Um, so with the holding patterns, I think as people get comfortable, it just comes down to, like Tony said, house, you know, house poor, right? So what what's your payment going to be? And later, um, you can refinance if you want, and then you've got that much more money in your pocket each month. All right. From each of you uh, in the segments this morning, we're going to ask what kind of trend you're seeing, who's looking, who's buying, who is not uh, willing to sell. What would you tell us first, Tony? Well, because the um, June is National Home Ownership Month here, and so, you know, I had done a segment, an article for the Home Builders magazine. And one of the things that uh, people, to just to kind of confirm what we're talking about, where people still want to buy, is 78% of Americans associate home ownership with the American dream. So it's still something that's a, a burning desire for people to do. Now it's just a matter of they just need more information to make that uh, educated decision. The trend that we're seeing is we're seeing more people – buying new construction homes because new construction has been filling the gap of the lack of inventory. So our hats off to the home builders in, in our local area. And I know that many home builders that are across the nation are doing the same, but um, people that you would never imagine. I mean, we have first time home buyers that are buying into homeowners associations and they're, you know, first time home buyers that are 300,000 plus, you know, which in the past you just said, Bill, if when you were doing your business, $300,000 plus, that was a move-up home, like a second or third move-up home, right? Well, hey, when we bought our home 16 years ago in Hartford, it was worth $135,000. Today, it's worth $316,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it, we talk about, so to Tara's point about the best investment, it is a great investment. People do regret that they didn't invest in some of these other things. Well, yeah, you never hear anyone drive by a house that said, oh, I'm glad I sold that home. Because typically the values went up so much. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) So when we talk about like the um, MLS and the percentage of homes that are on there, you know, in a traditional market, about 10% of the homes that are active on the MLS were new construction. Well, in nationally right now, it's about 30%. But when we talk about our market specifically, we represent, as of June 1st, it was we represent the new construction market represents about 46% of the homes available uh, out there. So... That's where we say our, our hats off to the home builders who are doing everything they can, their local leaders, you know, the Butch Warringtons of the world who are out there trying to get these, uh, you know, approvals done so that way people can get developments rolling. So it's it's been a 
a team effort with not only our city officials, but also with our builder organizations and, you know, the realtor organizations working directly with the home builders. Doug Topp's going to join us. He's president of the home builders and uh, 